What's going on guys, Nick here, and today we're finally installing the Jackson Racing Supercharger onto the BRZ today. I'm super excited to do this, and I know you guys are probably excited to see it too. Uh, it's going to be installed today, and the tune is going to be on Wednesday. Today is Sunday, so I have lots of time to do this. The intake manifold and rails and fuel, uh, rails, injectors, and pump are all done. And uh, the stock intake's already out of the car because of doing the manifold, so all I got to do is pull the front bumper off to get started. After you remove the front bumper, you have to remove the uh, passenger side headlight right here. So that's what I'm going to do now. Next you want to disconnect the negative uh, terminal from the uh, battery. Alright guys, quick update on uh, so you can kind of follow along with what I'm doing. Uh, there is a uh, instruction manual on how to install this. It's very detailed and tells you everything you need to do, but I'm going to show you guys what I've done so far. Um, your snorkel on the front there for your intake, that has to be removed. There is also a piece right here that goes in front of the radiator. That has to be removed, and then this piece underneath here, underneath the radiator, has to be removed as well. Your horn also, right here, mine's kind of dangling down there. The horn has to be taken off and relocated. I have to figure out where that has to be relocated at the moment. But uh, that's as far as I am right now, and I'll update you guys once I get a little bit more. Okay guys, quick recap on what I've been doing since I haven't shown the camera in a while. Uh, after you relocate the horn, relocate this... Um, this like breather hose off of the that came off the stock intake with this little piece on the end of it. Once that gets relocated over this way, uh, you add a MAF extension from Jackson Racing that they supplied to run over to this side, so that uh, you can put the MAF over here because it's going to go on the in uh, intercooler piping over here. After you do that, you're going to need to remove a idler pulley right here that's not going to be reused. You're going to remove this pulley underneath the alternator. And there's a series of bolts that you're going to have to remove that the Jackson Racing bracket mounts are going to go on. One of them bolts the alternator here. One of them is removed here on the timing cover. And this is all listed in the instructions if you guys didn't uh, know that, but it is. So uh, just follow the instructions and it's basically, it tells you everything you need to know. So remove this bolt here and then also remove this bolt here on the AC compressor. And uh, after you do that, and then make sure that the belt comes off too. You got to have your belt off. Uh, so once you do all of that, you can start mounting the uh, supercharger bracket mounts, which come in this box that is labeled supercharger bracket assembly. And when you open it up, you get new idler pulleys. You get the brackets that go into the, um, the holes that you just removed the bolts from. And you also get uh, zip ties. And you get the new belt that you need to be running on the... Uh, Supercharger and they also use gates belts, which are some of the best belts in the market So uh, you know that Jackson racing puts their money in the right spot I believe the innovate kit also uses a jack uh, a gates belt. So uh, good on them for uh, Using some uh, good high-quality products. So we're gonna start putting that, those uh, mounts onto the uh, Car and then we can bolt the supercharger on So as you guys can see a lot of this has gotten done. I'm gonna explain a lot of what just happened so you guys are okay with this. Um, you have to swap these two new pulleys on right here and right here. There's also um, studs that go through. One goes through here where I removed the alternator stud. One goes here and then another one goes here with the with the larger shim on it and this one has the smaller shim. And once you do that, uh, there's a bracket, mounting bracket, this black piece for the supercharger. That goes onto the supercharger also with these banjo bolts for the oil in and out to uh, cool the supercharger and then after you do that you put the belt on after you bolt the supercharger onto this and the belt goes on make sure that all the teeth are aligned properly so that you don't have issues with uh, the belt getting cut or slipping off uh, but other than that the supercharger is now bolted on and we can start doing uh, intercooler stuff in the front here with the intercooler and oil cooler and then the uh, oil system 
and that's basically it. Alright guys, after the supercharger is bolted on, you have to start doing the intercooler and uh, oil cooler stuff. So you get the oil intercooler, and in the instructions it explains how uh, the oblong design of it, if you can see, there's more of, of the cooler on this side than on this side, so that means that this side goes facing up. So when you have it up on the car, this bracket here that you bolt on with two bolts, right here and here, so that the cooler sits like this, and then you bolt the inner cooler, or the oil cooler, excuse me, behind it with uh, cushion pads and uh, a couple of screws. So that sits back like this, and you also have the fittings that you have to put on right here and here. Make sure that the outlets point outwards away from each other, and uh, make sure you oil the uh, bolt before you put it on and tighten it down so it's a little snug. So that's how you do the inner cooler and oil cooler stuff. So we're going to try to mount it on the car and show you how to do it. Alright guys, another progress update. Uh, I'm going to explain everything that happened from the last time. Uh, you guys know the supercharger is bolted on and we were starting the inner cooler and oil cooler. I showed you how the uh, inner cooler and oil cooler bolt up to each other right through here. Um, there's a steel stud that you have to put in right up here into one of the body uh, holes in the bumper and there's a 75.75 uh, millimeter spacer or something like that that goes on it with a bolt that holds it on so that you can slide the one bracket uh, from the intercooler on and then the other side gets bolted there's a hole if I can get it in here there's a hole in here and if you guys could see there's a bolt here that I had to slide in through so you slide the bolt in through here and put the nut on the bottom right there and then that holds in the bracket so it's holding it from the top and then also from the bottom they supply uh, little uh, arms that bolt up here with the supplied hardware and once they're on and bolted in uh, then it holds the super sh the, excuse me it holds the intercooler from the bottom I just have to tighten them up all the way and then the intercooler is on and I can start doing uh, routing intercooler piping and then start on the oil system and then that's basically it Okay, another update, we did the uh, intercooler piping with all the couplings and clamps to go up through here. This is really tight. I read online that this was going to be tight. Uh, routing it past the front bumper right here, it rubs on it right here a little bit, and it touches the uh, windshield washer fluid reservoir, but it seems like everything worked out okay. All the clamps are on. Everything's on tight. This is up against the uh, ring for the throttle body. And I have to put the math from the stock intake, which is right here. Take this math out, put it here, and the math extension wire comes up right here, plugs there. So that's going to get done now. All the intercooler piping's on, and uh, once we do that, we can start doing uh, vacuum stuff with the verter valves and uh, also with the oiling system for the supercharger. So we're getting there. Quick thing to note, um, this intercooler pipe was actually on upside down and uh, it was restricting the headlight from going in so it has to be up so that it's tight up against this bumper right here and uh, rather not uh, sticking out like it was and uh, restricting the headlight from going in so make sure that the pipe is oriented the correct way. Alright, once all the intercooler and oil cooler stuff is on you have to start doing the oil reservoir which bolts up right here and then it has a line, return line on the top and the uh, feed line on the bottom. Uh, you've wired, uh, there's a diagram right here that you have to follow and once you follow this from the bottom there's a filter oil filter that goes here and then it goes to the inside of the supercharger then you have a hose on the outside that runs down to the oil cooler right there and then there's one on this side of the oil cooler as well and then it returns back up to the top and continues feeding so that's basically how you do the uh, oil cooler side of it and uh, that's done now. Real quick, after you do the uh, oil uh, reservoir for the uh, oil cooler, uh, you then have to take this hose back off of the manifold right here. And you have to cut a hole in it. Actually, you cut it in half. And then add a, um, a, T, a T valve into it so that you can uh, run your vacuum and all that other good stuff. So this has to be put back down in here. Right on that line right there. So once that's back on there, we can move on from there. After you run the vacuum line from the T valve all the way back here, you run it all the way up to the front. And then you also have to install your uh, bypass or diverter valve, however you want to say it. Uh, there's a 3-inch hose right here 
that has to be attached to the bottom of the intake and you put the bypass valve on so that the opening faces the passenger side and the vacuum side, that tiny little piece right on the end there, faces the driver side fender and yeah, then your diverter valve is on, bypass valve would be on the car. Alright guys, I have the PCV hose off the back of the motor and the manifold, it bolts down to here somewhere, where are you? It's somewhere down here. I can't even see it. Hold on. Right here. Right there is where it bolts up. So that comes up from there, goes to here. You have to take that off, and in the diagram listed below, you take the hose just like they have it, and you have to cut it just like you did for the um, for the vacuum line. This is your new PCV valve. And uh, it's listed right on the valve, which way points to the manifold. The end with the black piece on it, so it goes this way. So when you run this onto the car, this part right here goes to the manifold. This part goes down to the engine block. So you have to run it so that the black piece is pointing this way. So I'm going to cut this now and put this valve, a uh, uh, high-performance PCV valve, into this hose. All right, this is what it looks like completed with the clamps on and the PCV installed. And you also have to cut this cover off of it because uh, the clamps will not fit over it and you won't be needing it anymore. So this is what it looks like. About to throw it on the car. Alright guys, I just did the sound tube delete. As you guys can see, here's the sound tube. Uh, there is a clamp. I hear it's like a little plastic clip that holds it in here and it connects down into the car right down in here. And then if you get into the car... Alright, Jackson Racing supplies you with a tiny little plug. If I can find it for you. You pull the carpet back, right up in here, and hold the camera down here, and it's right there. Plugs it up, so that's where the sound tube was coming in, so now that's plugged up. Alright, so one of the last steps you have to do is take your uh, Jackson Racing uh, with the Rotrex traction fluid and put it in your oil reservoir that is back here. Shoot compressed air through it, lightly compressed air and then loosen this banjo bolt onto the in fitting on the supercharger and once it starts leaking out oil, tighten it up and the supercharger is primed and then you can start the car. But when you start the car, you have to keep filling fluid through here as it fills uh, the oil cooler, the supercharger, the oil filter that's right here. So just keep that in mind. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. So we just primed the, uh, the oil reservoir, me and my dad, we're doing it. And uh, all you have to do is you put a little bit of the uh, Rotrex traction fluid right there. You put that into the top of it, and then you take... We had a compressor, and we kept pumping it up to about 20 PSI, not even a lot, because they wanted it to be lightly compressed air. And you loosen the banjo bolt here, and then you just keep compressing air and filling the reservoir until it starts to leak out. And we actually got it to leak out. It's on the end of the supercharger. We're going to wipe that up. And that means the supercharger is primed, and the car can be started now. So, um, now all you gotta do is just put the car all back together, and, uh, we're done. Alright guys, so that is how you install the Jackson Racing Supercharger onto a 2013 and up Subaru BRZ. I know this is a really, in the install a lot of people wanted to see. Uh, all you had to do in the end of it was just put the bumper back on. Um, I was having problems with the under panels to get them back on, so I'm gonna run the car without them just to go for the tune, and then after that I'm gonna try to put them back on. But, um... This install probably took me total probably about 10 hours. I was mostly by myself. I had people coming maybe for like a couple minutes or so to help me out. But um, took probably about 10 hours to do. Um, if you don't know what you're doing with tools, it's, it's going to be a little hard if you don't know how to read simple instructions. But, I mean, if you can read instructions, you could use tools. Uh, it wouldn't be too hard to do. Um, but this is on the car now, and it's going to get tuned. So thanks for watching, and take care.